the Real Estate You podcast with Letty Ann. Hi there, and welcome back to Real Estate You with Letty Ann. Today, I have on my show, Jim Mafuccio. He is the co-principal at Aspen Funds, and we're going to talk about investing and what's happening in the investment world with regard to residential real estate. Jim, welcome from Monument Park, Colorado. Yeah, it's great to be uh, with you here, Letty Ann. So we're delighted to have you. So um, tell us a little bit about Jim and tell us a little bit about the Aspen Funds. And, so, you know, we had talked a little bit about your background. You've been licensed in several states. You've had a real estate license. Um, and then uh, we can segue right into Aspen Funds and uh, what what mm -hmm. you do there. Sure. Yeah. So, yeah, I've been full time involved in the real estate world since 1986. Started when I was five years old. Just kidding. Um, <laughs> but uh, I started off actually as a developer. I'd been an engineer prior to that, working in the corporate world. So I just kind of leveraged my project management skills and I jumped into a small scale residential development in Southern California. And uh, and I also bought and sold property and for other people as a transactional, you know, transactional business as a realtor uh, on and off throughout the years, throughout the decades. But for the most part, I've been involved in projects and raising money and doing deals. I kind of like to swing for the fences. And so you have really, really good years and you have some really crappy ones, frankly. So, uh, but I rode that roller coaster until about uh, 12 years ago. And uh, well, I'm sorry, no, 2012, when uh, I, I, I started a little business model that turned into Aspen Funds, hooked up with a partner in 2012 and we've been building this company. And what we do is we buy we buy non-performing mortgages and we work with borrowers to work those out. So uh, we, we actually become the bank, so to speak. We take the lender's position and uh, we just solve a lot of problems and make really good money for our investors doing it and hopefully provide a good outcome for the, the homeowners as well. So we've been building that, that uh, company that we, we run these, these mortgage funds for the last uh, eight years. And we've been, we actually just made the Inc 5,000 fastest growing private companies. And so we've been having a blast doing that. We have 25 people working for us, including two of my kids and then two of my partner's uh, kids as well. So it's kind of a family gig as well. And so we're just having a blast. I've finally, uh, you know, I think this is my third trip up the mountain in, in uh, real estate development work and projects. And I think this time it's going to stick. So. That's awesome. And congratulations on all your successful uh, accomplishments. Uh, I'm, uh, Aspen Funds, uh, their office is your only office here in Kansas City. And how? Uh, what's your relationship uh, with those here in Kansas City? Yeah, actually, our main headquarters is in Overland Park, right there in the, in the Kansas City metro area. And uh, we also have a we have uh, six staff out in the Baltimore, Maryland area. And up until October, we had a, a physical office there. But because of COVID, you know, everybody got sent home. And so our lease was coming up in October. So we, we, uh, we had an interview over Zoom with each one of our employees out there and asked them, so how's it working out working at home and found out that they love it. They were being super productive. Some of them had 45 minute commutes, which Mr. Sensitive me, I didn't even really realize that they were commuting to, to this office we had. And I said, well, what if we just shut the office down and you guys work from home? And Everybody was like, yeah, let's do that. So we closed that down. And so now we have the Kansas City office and then everybody else is remote. And uh, thank God for technology. You know, we're, we're leveraging technology and it's it's worked out great. I moved, my, my wife and I moved, as you mentioned, to Monument, Colorado, um, you know, as empty nesters and, you know, about four years ago. And I just, I love it. You know, I'm looking outside my window at snow on the ground still and get got the skis on down from the attic and getting ready to, head up for my first couple of days of skiing, so. Oh, that's amazing. So a little quick sidebar, Do you th uh, are ski resorts going to be open this season? Yeah, they are. They're gonna limit the number of lift ticket sales and you, you actually have to make reservations, but if you have a season pass, which I do, you get priority. So, and, and I like to go midweek anyway, so I don't think there'll be any problem. Do you have an Epic Pass? Tickets. I do, Epic yeah. Local, yep. yeah. Cool, yeah. yep, I do too, but it's expired. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I renewed mine, so. <laughs> Um, so Jim, if someone were wanting to invest, uh, and you told us a little bit about how Aspen funds works, uh, what's, uh, what is the minimum to get in? How does one invest? Are you still accepting investments? Uh, tell us a little bit about that. 
Yeah, best thing to do would be for someone just to visit our website and they can get all that information. I'm not in the capital raising side of the business. I will say this, uh, we are only, at this point, we can only take accredited investors and maybe most folks know what that means and maybe some don't, but you can go to the website and find it out. And the website's aspenfunds.us. But, uh, you know, we don't do any hard sell. Um, we're, we don't do training. We're not an education company. But uh, yeah, we do. We we uh, we we work with private investors and some institutional investors, and and uh, yeah, it's a pretty a pretty elegant program for for folks. So if they're interested, yeah, go visit the website and you get you'll get all the information you can. Is the minimum know. amount of if one were wanting to invest is the minimum amount uh, on that on the website there? Yeah, yeah, okay. and it's it's different for the different types of funds that we have. Oh, interesting. So, um, so there's several yeah, there's, packages or menu items to choose from. Two main ones, really. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And accredited. So we have a side of our business where we buy the non-performing loans and fix them. That would be like buying, you know, dilapidated houses and rehabbing them and selling them. Mm -hmm. But it's like we buy dilapidated mortgages and we rehab the mortgages. And then we also buy cash flowing mortgages with our income fund. And uh, that's more of a, just a mailbox money play where passive investors just, you know, we pass the we pass a good preferred return on onto our investors and we make a spread on, on, on those assets. So less rehab, uh, refurbishing a loan rather than refurbishing a house. Yeah. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, indeed. So how has COVID affected, uh, your, your business? Well, you know, I, I, internally and operationally, I just mentioned, you know, uh, sure. there Log it's, it's actually, <laughs> it's actually kind of opened everybody in the company's eyes to like, wow, we can really get a lot done using technology. As far as our actual asset base and our, our workout operations and whatnot. It's been pretty amazing, really. We just have not had that many hiccups. We haven't had, uh, you know, we haven't had a lot of people even asking for forbearance. We've had a few, and of course we work with them, but it's, you know, it just hasn't hit us that badly at all. We've had, we've just had three in a row of our best quarters ever. We actually doubled last quarter. So, I mean, we're just very blessed right now and it's just, we're, we're growing, you know, and I, and I talked to a lot of friends that are in the industry, you know, apartment people that buy and, and operate apartment buildings and single family residential and even in the short term rental Airbnb type space. And, you know, for the most part, nobody's really singing the country Western song right now. You know, everybody's done pretty well through this. So it kind of makes you wonder is, are there really that many people sick? As we, <laughs> but uh, anyway, it's a terrible thing for people that have, have been struck with it. There's no doubt about that. But, uh, but as far as our business goes, it really hasn't hurt us. So we're, we're very thankful. What's the trend in foreclosures or what do you see in the coming future uh, trending in foreclosures? Is this, you know, as it relates to COVID, is that what you're? Yeah. Or just, or just um, I, you know, COVID or not COVID just in, what, what's your predictions or, or you, I know yeah. you don't have a crystal well, ball, I, I, but what, I, what, what's actually, trending now? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right now, actually just in general, you know, 30,000 foot view, like aside from COVID, and everything else, there's a heck of a lot more, as you know, Letty Ann, there's a lot more equity in the market right now than there has been. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we really did change the way we underwrote loans uh, coming out of the mortgage crisis with the regulations that were put in place. Plus, you know, banks didn't want to get it handed to them again, you know, so, so uh, I think loans were underwritten more carefully. And so, yeah, values have gone up. I do think you've got some overheated markets and on the coasts, but you know, where you're located, where I'm located, uh, my goodness, I mean, you look at you look at the, the cost and, and the functionality of housing in the Midwest, for instance, as compares to rents, and then as compares to what people on the coast are paying, and I just don't see it going down. We're still making more people than we're making houses, and at the end of the day, you know, that means supply and demand. So there will always be a percentage of loans that are in default, and there will always be a percentage of foreclosures, but I don't think we're, I don't think we're in for any kind of a mortgage crisis thing. I think there will be a little bit of a wave that moves through the system from people that got in trouble during COVID and, and probably it's, it's probably kind of like the physical health aspect where the people that are getting taken out already kind of had some issues. You know what I mean? Like they weren't, they didn't really have their finances in healthy condition to begin with. And so maybe COVID was the last straw, but I don't think there's going to be a ton. I know there's, there's a lot of late delinquencies moving through the system. I think people will get it worked out with their lenders and we'll see some foreclosures. It'll be more of a blip than a wave. I, that's my personal opinion. And I feel that more people have more equity in their home now, in their properties now, than they certainly did uh, in two, 2008, 9, 10, 11, 12. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. So uh, we're all hopefully in a better spot with that regard. If you had any advice for a first time home buyer, what, what might that be, Jim? Buy yesterday. Right. <laughs> I mean, it just, you're, you're, you're going to live somewhere. And so you're either going, you're either going to rent the property or you're going to rent the money. And by rent the money, I mean, you're going to borrow money and buy a home, but at least nobody's going to tell you when you have to move and you're going to be building that equity, you know, you know, and, and you may have a season, a two or three years period at some point in time where, where equity is going down. Although in, in the Midwest kind of markets, I, I just don't see it. Everybody's got to live somewhere. And right now you can actually rent a home. You can actually own a home for less money out of pocket in most cases in the country than renting it. And it just, you're not going to see, well, I don't know how much longer these interest rates will prevail, but these are, these are interest rates where my parents bought their first home. You know, I mean, these are crazy interest rates. And, and then you get the tax deduction for the interest and property taxes on top of that. You buy a house and you know what, when it's time to, when it's time to move up to a bigger one, you keep that house, you rent it out and, and you do that three or four times throughout the course of a career. That's as a casual real estate investor. And you've got a retirement fund set up for the rest of your life because those houses will be free and clear in 30 years, you know? And to me, 30 years is like, I, well, I, I don't think in those terms anymore. I mean, <laughs> but you know, for your first time buyers, it's, I, I, I can't emphasize enough, do whatever you can to buy a home if you've got sustainable income. Yes, indeed. And there's never been a better time to buy 2.1, 2.2, 2.5. 2 what? Uh, you know, if they, if they only knew that 16 and 18% were the norm back in the day, I don't think I was born yet, but, um, yeah, I was, <laughs> I, that, I mean, that's absolutely unheard of. Can you imagine if those interest rates rates went to, to that, that, so take advantage of it while it's there. Granted, yeah. uh, the cost of the house might be a little bit more, but still at the end of the day, you're going to be far ahead. Uh, we just secured a buyer on new construction, 2.1% 15-year note. Of course, I didn't secure them, uh, but uh, one of the lenders we suggested. That's unheard crazy. Unheard of. Yeah. Unheard of. So your That's comparison crazy. to rent versus rent the money or rent the apartment, uh, rent the money for sure. Because it's not going to last. Nothing good ever comes easy and it's not going to last. So Right. I totally agree. So any closing thoughts for, for us, Jim? Uh, any investor advice uh, from the guru himself? Um, <laughs> uh, what, what, what advice might you have for the investor? Because we've talked about a, home, a first time home buyer. Um, but if someone did have some equity that they wanted to invest, uh, what are your thoughts? Well, it depends on whether they want to be an active investor or, or a truly passive investor. So, you know, like our, our investment funds are for absolutely passive investor. Like you, the only activity is you vet us out, you look at the opportunity. And once you, once you feel that it's good, you write your check and that's it. Then, then all the checks come towards you. As far as investing in like investing in a rental property, I think it's a phenomenal model. I think the biggest mistake a lot of people make is they, they run the numbers based on everything going smoothly. And then they say, wow, I can cash flow $250 a month. And if I buy 10 of these houses, that's 20. And, and the, the problem is you can't live off, you really can't live off the cash flow on a couple rental houses. At some point in time, a roof is going to need to be repaired. HVAC is going to go. So, so keep a reserve so that you never have to lose a property and then continue doing it. What you do, you know, as your day job, let's just say to generate income and then, uh, you know, don't try to live off the cash flow of real estate and, until you have enough where there's a cushion and you actually can cover those contingencies. But I see more people get too stretched out and then they quit their job and say, I'm just going to live off of rental real estate. And you can do that. But like I said, you have to have a lot of doors before that's really a, a safe, you know, way to live. So I love what you said. And I can't imagine two rental properties and thinking you could live off of it. It's you're basically breaking even uh, with right. those properties. You you might be uh, having a little stockpile of cash, but inevitably you need a new roof. Like you said, the foundation needs repaired. Oh, now we need new garage doors. So um, I, in my or just opinion, the turnover, I mean, just the turnover of a, of a tenant, you know, a tenant leaves and, you know, if it's, if, if your property's vacant for two months, I mean, you got to figure that, that, that discount factor in when you're projecting your rent, you have to factor in a vacancy rate, you know, and everything else. And any, any savvy real estate investor, and you can get the education. I'm just saying people that are selling you the home study courses, they're not going to tell you, you know, a lot of them aren't going to tell you the whole truth, which is you got to look over the long haul. How much cash flow did you really get from that property? 
given the drama that is going to occur. There, there will be drama because it involves people. You know, let's just face it. But it's still a great investment, but don't try to live off the cash flow when you're starting out. Now, when you accumulate, I mean, I know people that have 100 houses free and clear in Santa Barbara, and they rent for about three or $4,000 each and just do the math on that, okay? I and they all that. had mortgages 30 <laughs> years ago, but all the mortgages are paid off now. And so we're talking about a market where the teardowns are worth a million, the lots are worth a million bucks that these houses sit on. We just so, uh, spoke know. to a broker owner in Santa Cruz County um, this morning, and he, he said the same thing. The house is worth 250, but the land it's on is worth 850. So then you have yeah. to, you know, do you really have another 750,000 to do a teardown uh, on top right. of the $850,000 lot? And then you're next to a surfing shack. Um, but anyway, I've, I've learned so much uh, today and also from you. Uh, Jim Mafuccio with Aspen Funds. He's a co-principal there at Aspen Funds. And I believe it's aspenfunds.com. If you're interested dot US. in- oh, .us, forgive me, yeah. aspenfunds.us. So if you're interested in some passive investing, please check out their website and see how you might uh, get involved there. So Jim Mafuccio, fellow Paisan, so nice to talk yeah. with you. You as well, Letty Ann. Thank you. I appreciate your time today. And thank you for watching another episode of Real Estate You. If you like the content you're seeing, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Letty Ann and Associates Real Estate Services. And we look forward to seeing you next time.